When overriding points in ORL, it is important to remember that the user interface is highly configurable and that designs may vary by site. There are often multiple places where you can force a point into override from the tabular fields as well as from the graphical interfaces. It is important to understand that overriding input points may affect multiple output points with unintended consequences which is why it is best practice to override output points directly or to modify any sequence control variables such as cut-ins and cutouts, rather than override input points for a desired output effect. Because of this, the number of inputs with graphical override shortcuts in ORL is usually limited by design. For example, if you right-click on the suction pressure, you can usually override that value. This is because this point is considered a critical input point for compressor staging. This feature, however, has been disabled for nearly all of the other input points shown on this graphical layout. It is more likely on the graphical schematics to find output points available for override. For example, right-clicking on the condenser fan icon will allow the user to force the output active or inactive, which will turn that specific fan output on or off. Setting the output point back to auto will allow the system's algorithm to resume control. Another common graphical override is with the compressors. Simply right-click on the compressor graphic and select active for a compressor to turn on, inactive for it to turn off, or to auto which will resume normal algorithmic operation. Another override feature is the emergency override options. Some overrides may be restricted by fail-safe algorithms designed to ensure personnel safety and to protect against equipment damage or failure. Other overrides may be disabled or postponed until certain conditions or sequences of operation are met. Forcing an emergency override will disregard any and all of these fail-safe features and will immediately force a change at the control point. It is always recommended and safer to use the regular override option if that override does not engage, it is important to be aware of any safety or mechanical reasons why it may be delayed or disabled prior to forcing an emergency override. The emergency override option is in addition to the regular override feature, and it is possible to override both the normal and the emergency override points. Because of this, to disengage an emergency override, it must be returned to emergency auto state rather than just selecting auto, which would only clear a normal override command. A good practice while forcing overrides is to always use a timed duration. The permanent duration will keep a point force until manually set back to auto. In most circumstances, it is preferred and safer to use a timed duration in the event that a critical point has been forgotten and left in an overridden position. If the timer is used, it will automatically return to normal operation once the timer expires. While the graphical layout can be programmed for varying quick override features, nearly all points can be overridden when displayed in any of the tabular layouts. At the bottom of the system overview, for instance, where compressors are listed in a tabular form, we can right-click on any item in the outputs column and force an override. When forcing a point here, notice the command highlights the point purple, alerting us that the point is forced. If we navigate to any other tab or page where this output is shown, it will appear in purple. These tabular points will also be highlighted if their corresponding graphical icon is overridden as well. Looking through the RC config layout for compressor groups, and even in the overview tab, we can see that this compressor point is overridden. At any of these tables, we also have the option to remove this force or to force any other point into override. The same is true for any other tabular points found in ORL. If we go to our condenser configurations, we can see that I forgot to set a condenser fan output back to auto and can do so now. Another place where you can find points to override is the miscellaneous I.O. tab. It is important to again note that while you can override some inputs and outputs here, it is best practice to avoid overriding inputs as they may affect multiple outputs. A better option is to either override outputs directly or, if testing a sequence of operation, to manipulate the cut-in and cut-out values to observe the anticipated controlled operation. Additionally, there are override options under each of the universal loads. 
Looking at the main liquid line solenoid valve control, we can override its output by again right-clicking on the digital output in the control output setup. Even though there is a digital input we could manipulate at the bottom of this page, it is best to manipulate the output point directly. A useful tool for monitoring overrides is the points and override report. Here it will show you any points that are currently in override. While you cannot clear any overrides directly from this report, it will show you all that have been forced and the overall health of the system. Overrides that have been left active may be a workaround for a mechanical issue, and it is best practice to not remove any override you did not create yourself without first contacting the person who initially implemented them, or without having a technician on site to verify proper operation and control. This report should be checked to ensure that no overrides or emergency overrides that you are not intending to leave forced have been returned to automatic control prior to concluding your work.